what is out of the over 2000 interviews you've done which one is your favorite which one, do you, which, one, which one do you, do you think oh, about the most? Which one do you always go back to? Oh, I, I mean, my, my little personal favorite is, is one with uh, SB, which is a gang member. And, and not because it's so deep or heavy. It's, it's just SB was his, is, he, he got stabbed in the heart recently. And we thought, we thought he died, but I think he's alive. I haven't seen him since. It happened like four or five months ago. It, okay. um, but I haven't seen him since. I heard he survived. Um, it's only like a minute and a half long. It's the shortest video on my channel. And it's so intense and so beautiful and so well done about him talking about the streets. And it's just like, fuck, if I could just do that with every video. <laughs> it's, it, it was so beautiful, so beautifully done. And he was a great storyteller. He would tell these stories. He probably still does, hopefully. Um, he tells stories in like where he's playing, like him and his buddy are robbing a third guy. And he talks, he tells a story, what he's saying, and then he talks as if he's his buddy and then he talks <laughs> you and he's he's telling this whole story with three different characters but he's playing all three at the same time and he does it with such street slang and he's like <laughs> it's just so fascinating for me to listen to but he's talking about really violent crazy sh stuff that most of my audience probably doesn't like you know a lot of people love the gang's videos and other ones hate them and other people love the Appalachians and they other people find them boring and mm -hmm. you know how much drug addiction can you actually watch you know it's like so mm -hmm. some but people love those you know you put up a female an attractive female heroin addict that'll get a lot of views mm. so it's it's all that but uh the S SB one is fa all the SBs are great um the Jerry you know Jerry is the the black gentleman who was shot in the face with a shotgun Oh yeah, that one yeah. was. He just passed away this last weekend. Did he really? He died. Yeah, yeah. How long did he have? How long did he survive after he was shot in the face with a oh, shotgun? Oh, it's been a long time. I mean, it's been. I forget what year he was shot. But it's been fifteen years or so, maybe longer. Do you know how he died? Oh yeah, he had COPD. You know the breathing. He, he had problems breathing. He even told me I saw him a couple of days before he died. I, I would see him every, once or twice a week. I just stopped by and I was I was paying his bills and all that. So I'd, I'd see him often, and I saw him a couple of days before he passed away. And he uh, he just said, "Yeah, it's it's just so hard for me to even go down to the lobby of the his apartment. He lived on the third floor, for him just to go downstairs in the elevator, not the stairs, elevator." Mm -hmm. He said, "It's just so hard for me to get around now because my breathing is so bad." So I kind of knew that this might be happening, but I was surprised that it happened as soon as it did. But he was such a lovely dude. He's I was like, amazed at, at how well spoken that guy was mm -hmm. and how 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 friendly and charismatic he was from his a guy who was missing half of his head. When, when we, and that, uh, I think it's, I did, you know, I did the original video that's very kind of just crude. And I wasn't very proud of it. So I did, I did a, a part one and a part two with him. And then was, now there's a part three showing his apartment. But the, the part one and part two are the ones I would rather people watched because it covers everything in that original video that's not so good and, and much more. And in, I think, the part two of that, series he um he talks about forgiveness which which to me there's nothing more important to talk about and i asked him <clears throat> what would he what would he say to the guy who shot him because half his face and half his brain is missing the whole right side of his head it looks like a cantaloupe you dropped off a building his head is shaped like a <laughs> like a half moon. Right. And uh, he, he said, I love you. I forgive you. And that's the only way you can be. That's the only way that you can be. And people don't, a lot of people don't understand that. It's the only option because to be hateful hurts you. Mm -hmm. To be hateful doesn't accomplish anything. There seems to be so much hate in the world. And you, know, you just look in the comments on YouTube, it kind of half, seems like a third of them are, are hate-filled or motivated by hate. Hate accomplishes nothing. And what people don't understand about it, you know, to, to, to put out some hate against somebody, you're... you're that hate comes back to you and you, it hurts you more than it hurts them. Of course. The, the subconsciously. The people don't understand how subconsciously this, you this, suffer. You suffer. And if you want to hurt yourself, go ahead and hate somebody, but you're going to suffer for it, for it. And that's, that's, that's why I say I go to bed every night with clear conscience, man. I don't hate anybody or anything. I, if I loan you $5,000 and you never pay me back, 
I'm going to treat you exactly the way I did before you ever offered me, uh, when, before you ever borrowed $5,000. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat you exactly the same because I don't want to have that crap on me. I'm not, I'm probably going to loan, probably not going to loan you another five grand, but I'm not going to carry that anger with me. Cause if I carry that anger, like, man, that, that motherfucker didn't pay me back. It's not hurting you. <laughs> it's hurting me. And if I just let it go, as Jerry says in that talk, you just let it go. And you're lighter on your feet. And it's easier for you to smile. And it's easier for you to sleep. And it's your heart rate is lower and every, your brain waves are more calm and everything is better to just forgive and let go with everything. Like when I went through the divorce, it'd be very easy for me to like blame this, blame that, blame, th blame this person, blame, 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 blame. I took 100% of the responsibility for everything that I went through. 100% of the responsibility for everything. I don't care who else was involved. I take the, I take the blame for everything. And by doing that, I have total peace with, my, with everything. I'm not angry at anybody. Mm. Not angry at anybody. You just forgive. And you're, you're just lighter on your feet. You're happier. You're, you're at ease. You're, you're at peace. And it's just a better way to live. I, I don't know where I learned that. I've known that since I was a little kid. Mm. So that's not, that's, not one of the, that's not the most important lesson I've learned because I've seen I've seemed like I've known that my whole life. Even when I was a little kid, I just I knew that. My parents don't have it. My parents don't have that. No, no one in my family yeah, I can embodies relate. that, but I, I live by it, always have. It's not something I try to do. It's just something I have always done. Yeah, I feel like... Uh I feel like I know why you got divorced. I feel like your work probably mm -hmm. you were you're a workaholic and, yeah. and, and yeah, uh, so anyone any anyone who had a romantic relationship with you probably was going crazy, like, What the fuck? Pay attention to me. No, 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 my ex wife is the coolest woman that ever walked the earth. She was great. She is great. That's um, great that you maintained a good relationship. Oh with yeah, her. no, we just had Thanksgiving dinner together. Oh, she, that's fucking awesome, man. No, she's great. She's great. I, people, people meet her and they're like, what the fuck? You're, you're an idiot. I'm like, well, you know. But uh, no, it's all cool. It's all good. She's got a nice boyfriend now and it's all great. Um, and I'm happy for her. So no, it was, it, was, it was a time where my career was cranking and we were raising little kids. Or not little kids, but they were, we were, you know, she was totally into raising kids and I was totally into my work. And things just kind of like started to veer apart. And Create Equal came out, and it flopped. In my, I mean, it's out of print now, and you can buy a copy on, on, uh, like eBay or on Amazon. You can get a used copy for like a thousand bucks, so it's hard to find. What? Yeah, it's it's an it's an expensive book. Did now. you create a specific amount of copies to sell? I mean, the publisher did. Okay. Yeah. And there's no more available. Steidl, to Steidl in, in Germany published it, but uh, it, it it's out of print, and now you can find an old copy for a lot more money. So I, I guess I shouldn't be ashamed of it. I mean, the the first gallery show that I had with it we sold like half a million dollars in prints at that first show but that sounds like a lot but I spent much more than that to create that project you have to understand that I, I do things really heavy like really intense I don't just like kind of take some pictures I don't do that I don't kind of do you some mean you're not some corporate executive trying to squeeze profits out of everything you do no I, 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 I do things with gusto that's, that's one thing I do I, when I do something if I'm into it if I'm not into it good luck I right. won't even get off the sofa. I won't do shit. What's the point if you're not? If you're yeah, if I'm not into it, I just don't do shit. But if I'm into it, look out. Look out. <laughs> just look out. That's all I can say. That's the, the thing. Every, that's the way everything should be, man. That's where everything should be. People need, you need purpose in what you do. I, I, I am, when, when I am focused, there's no stopping me. <laughs> and between, between my com, the combination of focus and concentration and hope, just makes anything possible. It makes anything I want possible. And there's very little that I don't accomplish when, it, when I want it. That's amazing. It's man. great. It's great. But you have to believe and you have to really be so committed. And it's like, I'm going to make this happen. I don't care how, I don't care how much. So, sometimes you almost, I, I find I, like, I'll, I'll come up against something really negative. Like, oh, my, that's a really terrible setback. That's never going to happen. And I'll see how, no, that setback can actually make this happen. Because the other person, let's say you're interacting with a person. That person that's just said no, you allowed them to say no. You've given them the space. And that's really important. That's an important thing with, with human interactions is, is to give people the space or the respect to 
like, like you know, it's, it, it, probably, it applies to every kind of interaction. But let's, let's say somebody does something really bad. Like, let's, are you married? Yes. You're married. Let's, let's say you, you, you do something that, that really just your wife didn't dig and you, you, you really fucked up in some way. Who knows what? Just make up something mm-hmm. in your head. You fucked up. She's pissed off. She's disappointed in you. You were a, you were a serious fuck up. She could come back at you and go, what the fuck's the matter? She could, she could give you all kinds of crap for it. Or she could give you your space and your respect and let you kind of hold your head up when you come home from work. And that'll allow you to kind of get your dignity back. And you'll choose to do the right thing next time. Most likely. You'll choose to do the, the right thing next time something like that comes up. Instead of beha- re- repeating that same fucked up behavior. Hmm. By, by giving you that, that, that um, she's not going to condemn you when you came home from work. She's not going to like say, <clears throat> you, you motherfucker, you fucked up again. Or you do whatever. She's just going to interact with you just the way she, she, I, I, I'm not saying being passive and let you get, it, get getting away with it, but giving you the, the room to r- retain your dignity because that's important. That's super important that you, that you still feel good about yourself. It's like, it's like raising little kids. We talked about this earlier. If you, if you make the kid feel bad, they're going to be bad. If you make the kid feel good about themselves, they're going to do, the, do the right thing. And the same thing with adults. So if, she, if, if your wife makes you feel bad about something, you're probably going to continue to do it eventually. But if she, if, if she, if she allows you to forget about let's let's forget that happened. Let's forgive and forget. You know you fucked up. You process that. Man, I don't want that to happen again. I feel bad about doing it. But she didn't, like, make me feel guilty about it. Not try to punish you. Not try to punish you. Just, like, you know you disappointed her, right? You know you fucked up. And if you're a stand-up dude, you're, you're going to not do it again. And you can, re- you can get back to the relationship with your dignity, with your, you know, you can be proud of who you are. That's, I guess that's what I'm saying. Whereas, whereas otherwise, then you're going to feel bad about who you are. And eventually, that'll just, the whole relationship will deteriorate. Mm. You know, it'll all just fall apart because you feel like a piece of crap because of what you did. And that, that just makes you behave like a piece of crap. And it's the same thing with children. How did you learn this? It's just common sense. Every, everything boils down to common sense and science. It's all science. Yeah, but it has to be some sort of, it has to be some sort I, of experience. That, that, I mean, I read you're not born with that, right? I'm born with the forgiveness thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I was definitely born with that. I'm born with the, <laughs> the focus and drive that I got. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So uh, born with the, uh, I mean, it's just understanding. Like, do you think, do you think that, that theory or that concept of, of not, punishing someone for for a fuck up or a major mistake and letting them sit back i'm not saying being passive i'm not saying being passive at all just so if anybody's listening this oh you just you're just letting you're enabling or whatever and i'm not saying that what i'm doing is giving you room to do the right thing next time now if you continue to fuck up and do it again and again and again then the <laughs> right. yeah, yeah lock them up and whatever but right but all i'm saying is you're not saying cut off the relationship you're just saying no 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 i'm, I'm just saying like if everything's been fine, all of a sudden you did something really fucked up. Yep. Rather than just saying, dude, you really fucked up and you're an asshole and you, you, you know, all that and making you feel really shameful and really. Because chances are you already know that. You already know that. Yeah. Everybody knows when they fuck up. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be reminded. The fact that you're being reminded just makes you feel worse. But Mm -hmm. if you, if she just interacts with you just as before, just as she did before this happened, it gives you room to it gives you the space, the dignity to walk into the room again with your head held high, and give her a kiss on the forehead or cheek, and and just be cool, hmm. and do the right thing next time. And people don't seem to understand that they would rather just hate and condemn and and make you feel bad, and that that just right. takes things down. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants that. She doesn't want it, and you don't want it. It hurts her. It hurts you. Right. But if she did this. It, hurt, it helps her and it helps you. I'm not saying be passive though. I'm not saying right. just, oh, let no, people, saying. Let, you know. I totally understand. <clears throat> if you had one message for the world after everything you've learned from, from your life, your work, all the people you've interacted with, what would your, what would your message, what's your legacy? Oh, I, w- I would say forgiveness and understanding. 
forgiveness is such a huge one. Like I, I forgive really well. And, mm -hmm. and when I say forgive, it's just like what Jerry said in that talk. Mm -hmm. Totally forget. Just like never happened. Right. Like if, if you borrowed that 5,000 from me and you never paid me back, I, I would continue to interact with you as if nothing ever happened. Because it didn't in my head. And hopefully, it, you know, you get past it too. And one day maybe you pay me back and one day maybe you don't. I'm probably not going to loan you any more money. But that forgiveness, kind of like what, what we just talked about with your wife, mm -hmm. you know, Right. Um, it it allows everyone to heal, and that's what that's 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 the real thing that we want want to happen. That's the that's like the thing with my channel. I, I want us all to be healed and happy mm -hmm. and at peace and loving ourselves. Really, it's all about loving yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really the, the, it's that lack of unconditional love that happened in childhood that causes all these problems you see on my channel mm -hmm. and in life. Unconditional love is the answer. To if, if it blew, uh, the reason I mentioned the Blue Oyster Cult thing earlier, I, I never finished that. So if, if, if Blue Oyster Cult ever wanted their name back, <laughs> I would change the name of my uh, channel to, uh, so, uh, to Unconditional Love. Really? Because that's really what it is. Right. That's what all my videos all, are all about. The fact that you didn't get that when you were a kid, and now you're doing all this screwed up behavior because you were never loved unconditionally. And love is not unconditional love. There, it's, like, it's like a disguise that looks like love. And your mom is being nice to you, but then she's also being manipulative. And she's, she's you know, nice to you, but then she's not. And then she's nice to you, but there's all these games that are being played. And unconditional love is just like, it's just, it's just, it's unconditional. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that heals everything. Heals everything. You know, kids grow up beautifully with that. You know, they, you know, when you abuse a kid, when you sexually molest them, when you do all these terrible things, when you talk ne down to them, they end up broken. And if you just love them and accept them and give them, you know, patience and listen to them and talk to them as if they're intelligent, they grow up to be great people. So something along the lines of all that <laughs> is, is, what, <laughs> is what we all need. That's super powerful, man. Thank you again for being here.